for the radial enthusiast just give the history case is a simple hello of uh, learning history please our patient is a 45 year old male hypertensive presenting with unstable angina and mild lv dysfunction ef is around 40% uh, the angiography showed uh, isr led around 90% the right and the RC and the LCX are virtually normal and there is arterial usoria. So our plan is to do the LED ISR plasty through the arterial usoria. Yeah, uh, ma with, with me is uh, Dr. Rajani and he has uh, complicated my work by again puncturing the distal radial and I have to work through arterial usoria. So I will be having a very, very less effective length available. Rajni is with us since since ages now, and uh, you know he punctures practically 100% distal radial. And uh, during uh, the course of time, we will show he is probably the best distal radial operator with us. Arteria lusoria to enter ascending aorta. What are the things you guys are doing, and how many of them you are facing? Center. So, uh, yeah, it's actually. A mother you know. It's not as infrequent as we at one point thought, and uh, we are using the yeah, techniques that you have, uh, you know, uh, taught basically, and uh, yeah. they you work much better than we previously expected. Yeah, see that the catheter, the, the wire, and the catheter has a tendency to dive only in descending aorta because the left subclavian, you know, is arising. Uh, right, right subclavian is right subclavian is arising from the left of left subclavian. Yes. And uh, so my my catheter and my wire they have a tendency to go only uh, you know in the descending aorta. You yes. can see at the catheter selection normally when we are doing uh, with the tiger, you know if tiger enters ascending aorta well and good, but many times tiger does not enter and to me the best catheter to enter arterial lusoria is I am a diagnostic catheter and I have taken internal memory diagnostic catheter and here I am pulling everything back and trying it with internal memory diagnostic catheter you can see see this is a problem with this wire regular wire so I will use a baby J See? Baby J. Can you take Undo Swaslo to Jara? It makes a U turn there. Yeah. You saw that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now we will take Baby J. It's a complex uh, anatomy and when one has to be very, very patient. Only advantage I see working through arteria lusoria is once your guide catheter sits in coronary, arteria lusoria adds to the extra backup of guide. You can do, you know, anything and guide will not come out. Yep. It, it also eliminates the carotid from the innominate. That's right. You get protection probably. <laughs> yes. But somehow, literature mentions the incidence of arterial usoria less than 0.5% in our lab. Every month we come across a couple of arterial usoria or more. Huh? I don't know why. And proven arterial usoria. I think you that's because see? you do you, more you than see? 500 cases. You yes. can see, I am in ascending aorta. Uh, uh, yep. As you know the arterial usoria and that is why it comes to you. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> more, more. See, more. I am traversing... My, my catheter very slowly. Now I am in business. Yeah. Any so specific, yes. regular Any specific guide for arterial lusora or we can go with the, the routine? I will use uh, again, uh, uh, you know, XB uh, for this case, XB 3.5. Or m -plats does better or? No, no, m -plats, I ha always have reservation to use m -plats by and large. Because m -plats can create sometimes some... Unavoidable dangerous problems yes. for us. That okay. is the signature curve of the wire. It <laughs> looks like that in most yeah. cases. Roller coaster. Yeah. Roller coaster, <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, he is opening the car. Rajni is opening the car. He has opened up completely. <laughs> He is a 45 year old gentleman who had his stand done before 6 months and he has been referred to us for instant treatment. We have done angiogram and preserved him for trico. Good morning sir, Surendra here. Hi Surendra, how are you? I'm you fine, are not sir. speaking since morning. Huh? <laughs> You can sir, see I am very, very slow, very slow maneuvering this. Push the wire No, 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 pull it back. Or else, put a wire connector, give me a coronary wire with shape and I will use balloon assisted to enter in. Or else, we can use an extra, yeah. extra stiff amplard wire. Yeah. Another, give me extra stiff amplard wire. Sir, That'll is there that. any specific reason choosing XB over launcher? Launcher we are not using in our lab nowadays. Because you taught us oh, yeah. with the launcher. Actually. Yeah, I know. All the time we have used. The tip is uh, relatively hard of XB. Yeah, you have to be little careful with XB. XB is a good support catheter, but yes. It won't go. No. You, usually there is no role for extra stiff wire, but in such cases, I think yes. Or yes, yes. I am slowly, inch by inch, I am traversing. Here, so Rajni, I personally feel that if we have an extra backup, uh, uh, yeah, just yes. jackhammering. Entering. Okay. Great. So, once I cannulate, you say great. <laughs> Still, yeah. I am not <laughs> cannulated. <laughs> Inject. Let me push the wire in and a little bit more this if I can the challenge is to translate the uh, pressure and the torque to the tip and not going down the aorta the angiography was done by extra back of 5 at that time yes yes I am concentrating, you know, I, my eyes are on the tip of the guide rather than, you know, thinking of clock or counterclock rotation. In this case, it's going to give us a little bit hard time, I think, but let's see. Extra, uh, extra support, extra stiff amplars wire will be required just to make a loop over there out because what if you make a loop facing the right and then turn it into the left sometimes that works yeah but you know at at the moment i have uh, no uh, control over the tip of the guide because of arterial usoria yep i think this is where the launcher xb difference might be playing a role yeah the tip of the xb is a little too stiff for making that upward turn This should work. Some of us mortals might have used the left radial approach if we knew that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, John. I'm passionately anti-left radial, so you know, I would have struggled. But but you're right. I mean, that is one option, absolutely.
you think we can change over to launcher we have it available yeah. i think that will work tejas i think this is the xb bothering you yeah. you know what about the five french guiding in such cases i want to do oct in this case i think okay. if you go to launcher it will be in the xb tip is i know you will get this ah, now yeah. i am in yes. business yes. now you now be give in. me the stephen yes. you will be in once it sits it's not going to be coming out <laughs> yeah <laughs> no 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 regular wire but uh, getting Opposite. back to john's point about the left wrist you know if if you knew in advance that you have this and you're uncomfortable with going through it i think the left wrist <laughs> is a uh, is a reasonable approach I absolutely mean, you don't want to scare away an operator just cuz they see know that this he is here there are alternatives Uh, 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 uh. You know what, Samir? Left yeah. Judkins could have worked well, huh? Yeah, Left Judkins, uh, and it's very proximal stenosis, so it might yeah. have not be a problem. Many young guys must be feeling very happy seeing me struggling, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, That's why they're here. I am almost there. Yes. What do you think? Rare, yes. you, you close, but a uh, little more yeah. turn posterior or anterior. I don't know which way it is. <laughs> Go to LAO caudal. Yeah, it has come out. Inject. I think it, it shows how much the material matters actually in adverse circumstances. Yeah. Inject. Yes. Yes. It is almost. Now? Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now you're in. That was awesome. Yeah. So let's take a scene. Eh? Wait. Oh. oh. Okay, yes. keep it like this. Give me uh, one injection and give me uh, wire. Give me power turn flex. And yeah, a, 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 a non compliant uh, 3 by 15, uh, maybe uh, NC track. It's a pretty tight lesion. Yes. The disease extends almost all the way to the distal left main, doesn't it? That's that's yes. right. Yeah. That's dist right. Distally involving the bifurcation. Uh, maybe I will bring my stand up to the ostium of LAD to cover it. I'm sure the angle between circ and LAD is is Wide. good. It's good. Hey, it has come out? What? I think it's still in, looks like. Yeah, there we go. Yes. I really don't want to waste any time. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to put a wire in the circ? Uh, I will finish it. It, it yeah. will give more support to the catheter. Support is arterial usuria actually now. <laughs> Inject. Inject. Perfect. Perfect. Give me, uh, yeah, 3 by 15 NC track. Teachers, do we know what the initial stent was that was in there? Pardon? Do we know what the original stent was that was uh, placed in this LAD? It was before six months. Right. And I think the stent was a uh, Zions. A Zions, okay. So are yeah. you going to use a different drug or? I think so. I will be using our Ciro, that is Cirolimus.
last year you have also shown one case of this arterial ulcerative episcia. Somehow they come to our lab. <laughs> Do you guys really think it makes a difference changing drugs? But uh, the, does that theory uh, really yeah. hold some substance, Rajiv? Changing the drug? Well, the, 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 the two randomized trials that I know of, the SWITCH trial, and I can't remember the other one, showed it didn't make any difference going from, I think, a Limus to a Taxus and the other way around. But we don't use a Paclitax anymore, and it Go seems to, to me to make sense to do something different. Uh, if you haven't got an obvious mechanical uh, contribution, then doing something different seems to make sense. What do you guys think? I think um, when you, some of it may have to depend on what kind of okay, procedure was done initially. Was it, nee? did they use a lot of brute strength on it, a Who lot of a manipulation of the artery? Um, that can also set Polario yourself quarter. up for this too. This is a pretty so diffuse is instant restenosis and at six months failing with, uh, you with think the science, it's kind of bleak. You think I should cover the whole length of stent? Because distal age yes. is also diseased. Yeah, I would go from that bifurcation. That's all the way right. Back. right. Yeah. Go to RAO cranial. Yeah. We have to be very careful selecting the stand. Now, uh, Orsiro is available. Long lengths are from 35 and 40. I think the mechanism would also be important with the imaging to see if it's under deployment 35? or, you know, what was the Three? mechanism of restenosis. 3 by 35 or 0? Post. Sir, what is your say about drug eluting balloon in this case? Drug eluting balloon, I am, I have never been comfortable with that concept. I don't know, and not in coronary. If I want to try, you know, I will try in periphery, but uh, not in coronary. I will like to have a view from our international guest about drug eluting balloon. I think you know, if you have a lot of bulk the balloon is not going to help you acutely push that out of the way and so you know in intimal hyperplasia type situation it's probably not very effective because you have to fight the recoil anyway ian what is your opinion about drug eluting balloon um we don't use them so i don't really have a i have a hard time trying to understand how the drug is going to actually <laughs> get to the vessel and stay there long enough yeah. to make a difference we, we've used the peripheral drug eluting balloons in the coronaries, um, the, the 4x40 is a small one, and uh, two things are notable. One, they are impossible to get down, they're huge and really hard to deliver. Number two, all the patients still come back, they just haven't worked. So I'll, I'll ask the, my other colleagues here who have okay. maybe more experience with Go DCPs. to AP Cordal. Yeah, we have used in uh, uh, two cases in uh, post-end resources, peripheral vascular disease. One is doing well, one again reached nose. We have not much experience. I think, you know, bioabsorbable stent makes more, more sense than drug eluting balloon. Yeah. Yeah. Record. Is that okay? Looks good, yeah. I, I think, yeah, go up. There is a chance that we may compromise diagonal. We will see. We will fix it, if at all. Mostly not. I think it will stay open. I think everything will work out here. It's yeah. good location, good length. Jaldi, quick. Oh, it has come out. Go, 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 go. Go. 12. Keep it for some time. Deflate. Question to Dr. Akasaga. Uh, how good is OCT for assessing chronic, uh, you know, a deployment of the stent? Not acute, Deflate, but yeah. chronic. Uh, yes, uh, by OCT, uh, at the, at the moment, there are no correlation between histology and OCT finding, out, right? but uh, based on OCT, we can identify the fibrous oh. or uh, uh, very, uh, mm, uh, there are 20. three, four patterns, right? Homogeneous fibrous pattern with back, high back scatter and the very low back scatter and the, the layered pattern. Uh, the, in our experience, in case with a very fibrous uh, instant listenos, uh, after scoring balloon, the cutting balloon, and then uh, drug coated balloon is effective. But the other tissue type, uh, drug coated balloon is not so effective. This looks great. 
Huh? There is Thank something. You. That Go to AP cranial and OCT we will use now. That looks and awesome. And then we will finish. Awesome. After OCT comment from Professor Akasaka, we will finish this session. Taquan has come already. Fourth case is Taquan's case. The diagonal stayed okay there. It's yes. There is a little plaque shift but not bad. Dimitri flow is there. No, there is one lecture. I'm sorry. From Rajiv Gulati, so Same. we have time. Yeah. Silastazole. Silastazole to this guy. Okay. Uh, not, yeah, not thrombotic, so I would say no, but. Um, I mean, there, there is some data, at least in the bare metal stent data and even in the drug eluting data, that additional of silastazole might prevent restenosis. Yeah, there is. I think uh, drug eluting stent restenosis is going to continue to plague us for. For years to come, uh, you know, it, we used to think that we'd fix restenosis with these D DSs, but you know, some people just oh, get DS right restenosis, and it's a real challenge, particularly the ones who go to surgery and the grafts fail. I think everybody has a handful of patients who they they tried everything with, and I think there's a market for a durable drug eluting, uh, a durable solution for this. We haven't figured out what it is, though. John, you guys did the trial with Avandia, and you know, did you find any? Improvement with insulin sensitizers on subsequent restenosis? No, not, not at all. Okay. Okay, okay. We are in the OCT. Brachytherapy in such cases? Yeah, with more than two layers of stent is undesirable. So if you re restenose, then okay. I think brachy is a good option. Ready? Ah, Angio uh, co-registration we are doing here. Not infrequently when patients come back with re resinosis you look back at the and you, okay. the very first stent was uh, suboptimal. Exactly. And I think it's just really should tell us all we got to get the first stent just right, adequate preparation. I think mechanism uh, is important. Exactly, because once Inject. you start layering multiple stents, it gets impossible. All right. Yeah, instant resinosis. Uh, IVAS is better prior to putting any uh, prior to doing balloon or anything or OCT. Yeah. Uh, that's what I was asking Dr. Dr. Akasaka and it, it looks like there is work on OCT also. On now uh, Dr. Akasaka will uh, give commentary. We have done the NGO co-registration and uh, he is closely evaluating uh, uh, the OCT findings. You, you can identify uh, see NGO co-registration, uh, it's a beautiful uh, thing to have in the cath lab. You know exactly if you want, whenever you want to evaluate a particular spot, this can really help. My mic. Yep. Um, okay. yes. 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 Yeah. We, we just now connect to the angio and put the, 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 the distal cast of the, the tip and then uh, the uh, the lay, uh, oh, Imaging portion and then the proximal, we can get an angio co registration. And uh, here uh, you can identify the marker, right? Okay, here you can identify the marker of the, the lens. Here uh, we can Red obtain shape. the image, right? 3.5, no, so non compliant. Uh, this uh, quant zone. quantum maverick. The similar to the previous case, uh, there are no dissection, no, no, no uh, so a position is very good. And some other stenosis in a uh, little bit distal portion, but uh, it might be okay, right? And uh, I try to show the, the proximal, yeah, some incomplete position, right? You can identify, yes. it, uh, right? This is an uh, importance of OCT finding, so uh, proximal. So what balloon you what balloon you want me to take? Okay, I, I try to measure the, the, the rings, right? H here to here might be. Uh, 4.3, right? So 4.5 balloon? Yeah, 4.5 balloon should be 4.5. Okay. Yeah, right. Non-compliant yeah, balloon. Yeah, 4.5. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, Dr. Akasaka, I yeah. saw you measuring lumen to lumen, uh, yes, whereas yes. with IVAS we measure external elastic membrane to external elastic right, membrane. Right. Can you comment on the difference and why the difference from IVAS to OCT? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, there are two recommendations: uh, the decision of the, the stent size and balloon size. If you use the lumen to lumen, we can select. Uh, a quarter size bigger balloon based on the lumen. However, we never exceed uh, Apollo the, uh, the Apollo uh, EL to EEL. If the EL to EEL is uh, 4.5, 4. 4. we never exceed the 4.5. So 
how to decide the size is depend on the, uh, the uh, based on the lumen and also the EEL to EEL. So, so the maximum size should be uh, EEL to EEL. Never okay. exceed the size. Yes. 4.5 so by. If you go by EEL to EEL, do you undersize a little bit and then go high pressure? Yeah, that's right. That's right. You are right. Yes. How much did you watch the lectures? Let's move the the, the bifurcation ah. here. Right. Uh, Dr. Akasaka. Yes, please. Do you uh, think for ISR cases uh, it is uh, uh, mandatory to do imaging La. before putting any uh, further stent or balloon? Uh, yes, uh, it depends on the institution, but in our institution we always measure the size of the balloon and stand based on the OCT findings because the measurement is very accurate and the, the oh. longitudinal measurement also is very accurate, right? So, uh, before, in this case, if you, do, if you do the uh, OCT before or putting a stand, no, 4 you can speculate Go to uh, AP, AP cordal or LAO cordal. Position. So, stent expansion yeah. capacity or zero, I think, can go up to 0.5 or 0.75. Yeah, right. And synergy can go up to 0.75 or 1 or so. Yeah, so yeah. any comment? Because we are taking a 4.5 balloon. We will go at a low yeah, pressure it, so and try to expand it as much as we can. Yeah. What do you think of the segment between 30 and 40 on the OCT longitudinal view? Okay. Is, there's a little bit narrower lumen there. Yeah, but it's, it's a, 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 here is a, the, yeah. the lumen profile. It's a mean diameter change, Eight. right? So only yes, uh, yeah. uh, longitudinal view sometimes the uh, vessel ten. is uh, torches. Okay, so record. We cannot get a clear no, no, longitudinal no, no. image. Okay, so you would not go by the rendered image in this case. Yeah, so if you rotate Record. here. Oh, I see what it is. Uh, we see it now. It looks yeah. better, right? Much better, yeah. Yeah, right. So, so I have dilated with 4.5 Apollo balloon. 4.5, nice, yeah. we have only that size available. One more view and then I will remove the guide and I will demonstrate arterial lusoria anatomy. Come to uh, maybe uh, uh, AP cranial. Remove everything. So after this case, I think there is a great to talk from uh, uh, Rajiv Gulati. He will be talking how uh, incorporating OCT in real world practice. So uh, I expect all the young guys to sit there. I know the first session was a little longer, but this talk is very important for all of you. I will be recording. You can see. Yep. No, no carotid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, friends. Thank you. Awesome. And after uh, this uh, talk, one will do. We'll be doing live case. You can change the panel. And thanks for everything. Thank you. Thank you.